valve 7 and 8. I'm going to rotate the crank, make sure that these are both closed. That one just open. This one is now open and closing, okay? They are both closed. I'm going to set the gap to 40 thousandths for this, for this example. I got a 25 and a 15, that's 40 thousandths. That's a big gap, but what we're doing is a reason for this. I use a dial for this. I prefer a dial. The book says you can do it manually this way. Some people don't have two dial. 40 thousandths on that one, 40 thousandths on that one. We're going to go to the front and get the one and two to close. Number two just open. Number two is closing. One and two are closed. You can see this one is this one's closed, this one's open, but they're go this one's going to open as this one is closing. When when my timing mark gets to top dead center zero right there then these two should be equally open. These are closed. These are the ones that are on the rock. And I'll check the the uh, gate the with the feeler gauge. See what we got here. Three thousandths. No. No. I can't use a feeler gauge to do this. That's why I like the dials. Because the rocker is on the valve. It's got pressure there. So this this is a bunch of this set them at forty thousands and then try to measure it and hell no you can't. So this is this is what I do. Bring the uh, pulley mark back to top dead center. Right there. And what do I have now for a gap? 25 and uh, let's go and 2. So there's 27. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. There's twenty-seven thousands. Let me get those numbers. So I got twenty-five and two. That's twenty-seven thousands. Okay, and rotor point in the right direction and our timing mark. There we are. Top dead center. Okay. Now we've done it the feeler gauge way. Goes to number one. 